Welcome to live stream number 142. My name is Lars Christensen and uh, today's topic is press pull and the combine tool. It sounds like some kind of a workout for like a CrossFit or some other hip exercise program. But there's a couple of features uh, I want to uh, just quickly uh, touch about. Now the press pull we talked about before on these live streams, but and some of you guys already know what that whole thing is about. But we're gonna go over that because if you don't, then you should know. And it will only take a couple of minutes. And then we're gonna talk about the combine tool. Now I've used the combine tool quite a bit throughout different uh, live streams. We used it in yesterday's um, live stream. And uh, it's probably one of those tools that if somebody asked me about the most undervalued tool, I think maybe the combined tool will be it. So I thought that we will do a quick live stream today and just kind of like touch on those uh, kind of two tools. You can see we already got people in here. So stop looking at my face. Let's uh, jump in and talk about uh, Fusion 360. So quickly, let's just uh, talk about uh, the press pull versus extrude. Because like I said, many of you guys already know what it is all about. But if you don't, I don't blame anybody for having some confusion. So if I open up a sketch, create a new sketch on this face here, I'm going to use the S key like I did the other day on the live stream and hit the center rectangle here. Let's do 50 by 50. Seems like that's a good thing. Um, and um, most people would probably think, all right, now we've got to extrude it. And they are not wrong. So there's extrude up here. You can click on that. Uh, either this icon, you can hit E on the keyboard for, uh, for extrude. Or you can go over like what I normally do and you can hit Q and uh, select press pull. Um, so the difference is, well, the difference is that extrude just does just what extrude does. It extrudes. Press pull does a couple of extra things. But you will see if I hit Q on my keyboard or hit the press pull, same thing, and I select this area, you will actually see that it does activate the extrude command. And it actually, even though I clicked here, that's the one that is highlighted. So if you use press pull, but you select an enclosed sketch, then it will turn itself into an, um, an extrude. Um, so nothing really gained there, right? One or the other, same result. Um, if you hit E or hit Q, where the difference kind of comes in is some of the other things that press pull can do. If I, again, go up and hit uh, press pull here, and I select this phase, um, you will see that it now goes into an offset phase. Um, and now I can actually add material on here. If I hit OK, you will see that now next to our little extrude icon, we now have an offset phase. Now, this here is not really, I mean, so, so that's one of the things. The press pull can do more things. I will just make sure that I highlight that if I did go up and hit the extrude uh, one, got the extrude back up here and I selected this face, um, I could actually also kind of offset that face out. Um, but you will see here when I click uh, OK, that that will maintain to be an extrude command. Um, so I guess the only nice thing up to this point using the press pull is that you get an offset face that will show you that this face was offset where there could be a little bit of confusion about the difference between these two, where this one was driven by a sketch, this one not uh, so much. The other thing that the press pull can do, a Q, is that if you select an edge, then you can actually also add a uh, fillet with it. So that is really the difference between uh, using the, the press pull. So I would not blame anybody uh, when they start out with a blank document to go in and start a sketch um, and, and draw up your sketch, do whatever whatever you need to do. Um, that And this point here, if you go to the extrude and extrude up, that you haven't missed the boat. You, that's, that's just as good as, uh, as hitting Q. For me, I think it's more just a habit thing that I get to, to, to that result. Now, of course, I cannot hit extrude and then select an edge and do a fillet, for example. Uh, th there you will have to use either, of course, the fillet command 
all again uh, the press pull. So quickly, five minutes, boom. Uh, I think I explained uh, the press pull. It's just really, um, you know, I think that when Fusion originally came out, there was only Shrewd, just like there is in Inventor and SolidWorks and all the other ones. And then somebody at the development team uh, had that good idea to say, well, why don't we make a tool that kind of like do more than just one thing? So the press pull will do the extrude, the fill, or the offset face. Cool. All right. Let's talk about a tool we used yesterday. Oh, and only these files here. Um, we used, we talked about the uh, combined tool. Again, I'm going to do this quick. Um, I don't want to waste too much of your time, but I think the combined tool might be one of the most underrated uh, questions, uh, or questions, underrated features uh, in, uh, in, in, in pretty much any CAD package because it's misleading because it says it combines what it does, but it actually also does a couple of other things. Let's start with the, with the combine. So new file, um, and one example could be something I don't do often. I don't go down here and select a sphere. How many times do you go out and you just model out some kind of a sphere? Well, that's an easy way to make a sphere. Um, if we had a couple of multi-bodies, that's why this is normally used. So let me open up another sketch. Um, and let's do some odd shape like a polygon, for example. There's your hex key right there, right? Hit uh, Q or extrude, whatever you <laughs> kind of like prefer. So now we have kind of two bodies um, in here. Now, of course, you can right click and do move copy. You can select one of these two bodies and we could now, uh, you know, start moving uh, this one over so they kind of uh, somehow maybe intersect in a way we, we want to. But when I do this here, there's still two bodies. Actually, if we expand the folder, you uh, will see that we have one body. That was the first, that was the sphere we created. And then the the hexagon uh, tool right there, we have two bodies. So that's where combine comes together. Not really a big surprise that this one uh, will uh, will combine things. So if I select, I uh, have a join, I select this uh, sphere, uh, I go and select this body. When I hit uh, okay here, you will see that these two get combined into to one. And, uh, and we now have one, uh, one body here. Um, the way that I like to think about this join uh, thing here could be, I mean, this would be an odd request from a customer asking you to model something up uh, like this. Um, but it could maybe be an interesting exercise for you to think about that if you get some part you got to model up, if you broke it down into sections, you could model up each section and then combine them together. Uh, into to that one final state. So that's a, a neat trick. But the interesting thing I think comes with uh, the combine tool, if we go by down here on the menu, right click and hit edit, is um, totally um, opposite of the name combining. It can actually also do uh, cut and, and intersect. And, and, and we used this yesterday to make that cool latch on the plastic thing. So if you didn't uh, the plastic box with a, with a lid on it. So if you didn't watch yesterday's live stream, you can check it out there because it actually also works in assembly mode. But what we could do was we could actually change this to, uh, to do, for example, something like uh, a cut. So what we could do was we could say we wanted to cut and when you cut, you got to select a target body. That means where do you want the cut to happen to? What could be this sphere? And then what is the tool body? Uh, that could be this hexagon shape here. And then you need to make a choice if you want to keep the tool, the tool body. Uh, do you want to keep the, the hexagon or do you want to let uh, the software kind of like consume that up uh, in the cut? Oh, I didn't select, select the same one. Target body was going to be the sphere, tool body here. And then you choose here if you want to have the hexagon now consumed, or if you want it to stay. So if I uncheck it here, you will see that the tool body will kind of like go away. And we now have that whatever is left over of the intersection between those two uh, to, be, to be in there. 
Um, the other option that is in here is the intersect um, in here, where whatever is in the, the intersection between the two uh, could be uh, uh, could be saved, and that is the the intersection. I think the two best ways that I have seen um, I have seen the cut and the intersects being used is one of them is I have used this a lot when you have watched me doing mold. So I, I model this up here. Um, what is not, it could actually have been like a um, you go to amusement park and you kind of like get a straw. But this is the same technique we used as yesterday for the O-ring. So I had a sketch, I drew up a sketch, and then I drew up a circle, and then I made um, made a uh, a sweep uh, to make this. So so one way that you many times can use the combine cut, kind of like the opposite of combining, would be if I went in here and created a sketch on this face here, and then let's create a sketch that goes like this. Let's hit Q for press pull or extrude, whatever you prefer. And I'm gonna do this symmetrical so it gets thickness on both ends here. Now it turns red because Fusion knows that I'm intersecting, but I'm actually gonna change it to a new body. So I'm actually ending up with kind of like with two bodies over here. So we have the, uh, <laughs> the straw from the amusement park and then we have uh, a block here. And then you could use um, the uh, combine tool, but not combining them. Instead, uh, say you wanna cut them. And the target body here could be our block of steel. And our tool body would be the, the straw. And I'm gonna not say keep tools, I'm gonna get rid of this too. And then if we do a, uh, a section analysis on this part, you will see that we kinda like created a, a cooling line through this solid block, right? By using by using that, that could be a way to kind of like creating some kind of a um, radiator. I've seen this being used in like plastic injection molds and things like that for cooling lines. This is a neat way to kind of like creating uh, creating that. So that's that's kind of like one uh, one way uh, to to do the the cut. Again, if this went a little bit too fast, uh, rewind back. The other one, the intersect. I've really only seen one good. I don't know. I haven't. I'm, maybe I'm not. Good um, imagination. A, a good use of the intersect tool is uh, check out this odd little little shape here. It almost looks like somebody took like a can, the little opening thing on a can, and bent it. Um, how would you go ahead about modeling this thing up if I asked you to model uh, this part up? And you could probably find 800 different ways. One way could be. So uh, let's go in and use the combine tools. I'm actually gonna go in and open a new document, create a new sketch here, and let's do a C for circle. And let's stay with our 50 millimeters. And I'm actually gonna create another circle in here. Let's make this 25. Uh, I'm gonna create a line. Boom here. Down, let's make it that 30, maybe. There, let's create a line out in space because I like to do that, or something like that. I really like this um, midpoint. I've used that a lot lately. Constraint from the midpoint of this one to the endpoint of that. That seems like that makes sense. Uh, let's do a, I don't know, now I'm just making things up. Now, here's a little trick maybe you maybe didn't know. Hit L for line. If you hold down Shift, on your keyboard when you go to a, uh, a circle like this and click, it will actually maintain a, a tangency uh, to, to that, place that right there. That's kind of, uh, so, so line, alpha line, hold down shift on your keyboard, hit a circle, and when you, you don't see anything until you left click the first to place the line, but then it will actually give you a, uh, a tangent line right there. That was a little power trick. Uh, let's do another, this time let's go and hit extrude because that's really what I'm gonna do here. Select these sections here, go isometric. I don't know. Now, can you see, if you look at this shape right here and you look at this shape here, can you kind of see where the intersect of the combine maybe comes together? 
between this and this. I don't know. We're still missing the second part. So let's do the second part. I'm going to create another sketch on um, this face here. And the way I did this, and there's probably different ways to do it. I thought it was fun to go in and hit uh, the spline tool. And um, I don't know, this spline could kind of like go from wherever, wherever we want. Uh, select spline there to this point, midpoint there. And let's see if we can snap into about the same point about there. So there's a spline. Um, I normally don't fully define splines. Uh, what I normally do is I right click on them, right? And select fix. That way I don't have to put all the, the dimensions on it. So this is a, um, a spline. And the reason I wanted to do a spline in here was because somebody asked me the other day, what is thicken? Under create, there is thicken. Um, and if you're looking at it, it says add thickness to surfaces, faces to make them a solid. Um, so if I just create this spline here, if I go into the patch environment, patch is like paper, and let's do another extrude. And I select this patch here, or this spline. And let's just drag that out like this. So right now, this is a face. There's nothing thickness to it. Uh, this is just a spline that I just used to patch extrude to make it here. Then if we go back into the model environment, under create, thicken, thicken. If I select that face, I can actually now add thickness to that and turn it into a solid. Isn't that weird? Maybe that is not weird, but that's how the thicken command works. So now we kind of, again, are back into uh, the two bodies. Now, if we go back into our the whole tool we're talking about here, the combine tool, now just look at these two shapes right now, right? Like one is a spline and the other one is this parametric looking thing. Go into the combine tool and we say we're gonna do the intersection between uh, these two tools, then you end up with that. Very interesting. Um, so I really think that the combine tool is like one of these, um, you know, hidden tools because it can do uh, a few different things uh, within one. So you can combine things, of course, as the name applies, but don't forget that you can actually go in and, uh, where did we do it? You can actually go in and cut with the two. And this is how any of you guys ever watched me do um, when I've done like moles, that's exactly what I'm doing, right? I'm taking one shape in, lay another shape over, and that's how you create a core cavity is with the cut function inside of the combine. And then uh, the last one, this little intersection kind of tool is an interesting way um, that you can model two different shapes up, find the intersection between them and get something um something else out haha -ha. that was all that i had planned for today i hope that was somewhat useful tomorrow is cam uh, i think we're going to talk about undercutting tomorrow in uh that's a good thing undercutting uh tomorrow um and remember next week there's no live stream next week so i'm going to san francisco uh to the main office at autodesk i'm going to go and meet a bunch of Great people. Uh, so no live streams uh, next week, but then we'll be back again. Man, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, to join these live streams. We really appreciate it. Watching the recording, of course, really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And if you're in the live chat, I'm going to jump in there and say hi to everybody. Take care, folks.